As you read this book, believe what you read, because it is true. Then start working on the practical suggestions the book contains and you too will have the spiritual experience that produces this quality of happiness. I know this is so because many of those to whom I have referred and shall refer in later chapters got their vital new life in the same way. Then having been changed inwardly, you will begin to create out of yourself not unhappiness but a happiness of such quality and character that you will wonder if you are living in the same world. As a matter of fact, it won't be the same world because you are not the same and what you are determines the world in which you live. So as you change, your world changes also. If happiness is determined by our thoughts, it is necessary to drive off the thoughts which make for depression and discouragement. This can be done first by simply determining to do it. Second, by utilizing an easily employed technique which I suggested to a businessman. I meet him at a luncheon and have seldom heard such gloom as he got off. His conversation would have been ultra depressing had I permitted it to affect me. It reeked with pessimism. To hear him talk, you would think everything was headed for ruin. Of course the man was tired, accumulated problems had swamped his mind, which was seeking release in retreat from a world which was too much for his depleted energy. His principal trouble was in his depressed thought pattern. He needed an infusion of light and faith. So rather boldly I said, if you want to feel better and stop being miserable, I can give you something that will fix you up. What can you do? He snorted. Are you a miracle worker? No, I replied. But I can put you in touch with a miracle worker who will drain off that unhappiness of yours and give you a new slant on life. I mean that I concluded as we separated. Apparently he became curious for he got in touch with me later and I gave him a little book of mine called Thought Conditioner. It contains 40 health and happiness producing thoughts. Inasmuch as it is a pocket sized booklet, I suggested that he carry it for easy consultation and that he drop one of the suggested thoughts in his mind every day for 40 days. I further suggested that he commit each thought to memory, thus allowing it to dissolve in consciousness and thus he visualize this healthy thought sending a quieting and healing influence through his mind. I assured him that if he would follow this plan, these healthy thoughts would drive off the diseased thoughts that were sapping his joy, energy and creative ability. The idea at first impressed him as being a bit queer and he had his doubts. But he followed directions. After about three weeks, he called me on the telephone and shouted, Boy, this sure works. It is wonderful. I have snapped out of it and I wouldn't have believed it possible. He remains snapped out of it and is genuinely happy person. This pleasant condition resulted because he became skilled in power to create his own happiness. He later commented that his first mental hurdle was honestly to face the fact that while his unhappiness made him miserable, yet he was at home in self-pity and self-punishment thoughts. He knew that these sick thoughts were the cause of his trouble. But he shrank from the effort required to desire change sufficiently to actually go about changing. But when he began systematically to entrust healthy spiritual thoughts into his mind as directed, he began first to want new life, then to realize the thrilling fact that he could have it, then the even more amazing fact that he was getting it. The result was that after some three weeks of a self-improvement process, new happiness burst upon him.